Hey, y'all. Today, I've got a lot of different subjects I'm going to address uh, briefly, each one. So let me list them for you. I've got a new device I'm going to show you. We'll unbox it together. I'm going to talk about how to spot a good overnight parking when you're in a new city, just what to look for, just briefly. I'm not gonna go over all the parking um, ideas and things, just one particular idea how to spot a good one. Another one also is how to find a good mechanic when you're out on the road. I'm gonna mention the beet harvest. Um, in Minnesota and in Michigan, there are new rules that could affect everybody who does the beet harvest here and there. And I'm going to briefly show you, I've got to mock it, I can't do it for you, but I'm going to mock showing you how to use that plus and minus on your, uh, for automatic uh, cars, you know, for your automatic transmission, because I've talked about that. And then one of you asked me to go over, you were curious why I, hi, um, you were curious why I got started as a nomad. So I'll wait for that at the end because I know a lot of you have already heard my story. Well, if you want to hear it again, that's cool. But if not, when you get to that part, yeah, you can turn it off. I have had a few mentions from people like, oh, you need to make smaller, uh, shorter videos. No, I don't. <laughs> no, some of you like long ones. If you like short ones, just stop when you get tired. But if you want to come back, you know, the way YouTube works, if you're logged into your account, which you should be, I mean, get your account going and log in. That way you can subscribe to different channels, especially mine. Then what you can do is it will start you off where you left off and then you can finish it the next day. I put three videos up a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So on Tuesday, you can continue it and it'd be, almost be like having another video, right? So I like to uh, keep my algorithms with YouTube going the same each video. And so I normally put up 30 minute videos. Yeah. I want to mention my stickers and my magnets. You can see them here. I'll show them my limited edition magnet, my limited edition sticker. You can go on minivanlee.com to buy them. Just scroll down. Just You don't even have to scroll down. The button's right there, um, just underneath the main picture. Go in and order them. It's a secure ordering site. It's, it's, all, it's all good. So it's a good way to support me if you want to. So I wanted to mention that. And of course, the book. The book. Yes, got the book. Uh, Order it if, if you don't have it. There's ebook and there's also paperback. And the link is in the comments and in the video description. Okay, well, let's get started. The one thing I want to mention is the beet harvest. Jack, traveling with Jack, he's in Ohio and Kentucky area right now. So he hasn't put up videos for a while, but he will eventually when he's ready, but he's a hard working guy, yes. But he did inform me of their changes to the beet harvest. And what he has done is backed out. He did sign up for two beet harvests, Minnesota and Michigan, and he's backed out now because he doesn't like the new rules. The new rules are that if you want a parking space, because where else are you going to park? They, it's like a 10, 12 hour a day uh, job. Where are you going to, you, well, yeah, where are you going to park? So they did have parking available for them. But now the rules are you have to have a class B or above, which would be class A, class B, and class C. If you don't have that, there's no parking for you. And also they used to allow, there would be, they would offer to pay for a hotel or I think a motel. Well, what they would do is take a hundred dollars out a week for just you for a motel or $50 if you shared one with somebody. Yeah. Well, that has changed too. I don't know if they totally eliminated or they put the price up, but they took that away too. Now he did check out to see what it would cost for an RV. And it's just way too expensive. So he backed out. When he called them, he backed out and she said, well, that does that include the Michigan beet harvest? He says, yep. Yes, it does. So 
they're going to find themselves in a pickle if they're not going to accommodate other people who do more dry camping. So I just wanted to report that on the bead harvest. Yes. Okay, now how do you spot an overnight parking? And let me just mention, let's, I'm going to be very specific. Inside of a city or a town, how do you spot an overnight parking spot? Well, what I do is I look around and I, I'm, uh, const I'm constantly observing the city or the town where I'm maneuvering through. When I go to a city, I look for certain areas where I can walk because I need to walk every day. Even though I'm a nomad, I still want to do certain things that I need to do every day. I suppose I could go to a gym and I can go on a treadmill, but I don't particularly enjoy treadmills like I do walking outside. When I'm out, when I was in San Francisco, what I did, just to, as an example, when I was in San Francisco, I was, I found a path where I could walk. But so while I'm walking, I'm looking around and I'm always observing. I'm looking at the curbs. Are they repainted red? Are they painted yellow? What kind of cars are already there parked? I'm looking for street signs. What does the street sign say? Are there uh, limited parking according to the street signs? I may walk over and I read the street signs. What's going on with this street? And I, like I said, I'm looking at the different types of cars that are parked there. When I was at the beach area, I was looking at the signs. What does it say? Well, and the beach, they did say no parking after like midnight. So, I mean, that wouldn't make it possible to park overnight. So what I look for is the curb, whether it's painted or not. And I look around to see if there's other cars doing the same thing that I'm doing. If you're a nomad, you're gonna notice people doing the same thing. And a lot of people living in a bricks and sticks are privy to it too, because you watch these channels, you know what to look for. I had a gal, um, hi, Jerry, shout out to Jerry. She has informed me where I can park in San Francisco because she works in that area and she notices the cars. So she is informed me. So when I go back to San Francisco, which I'm going to, uh, I know exactly where to park. She has uh, sent me a dropped pin on the areas. Now in San Francisco, there are signs and it will, for that street, it will let you know what day that they street uh, clean it. Because in San Francisco, it's really clean. A lot of people say it's really dirty every part of San Francisco is filthy dirty. I suppose there are parts in town where the homeless are, but where um, where I hang out, where I did hang out when I was there, nah, it, it really wasn't, um, I didn't see homeless hanging around. So San Francisco, there's a part of San Francisco where I know that it has everything I need and everything I want. So I'll be going back. Uh, first, I'm gonna check out a couple of coastal little towns and go up highway one, like y'all have been advising me to do, and I'm gonna do that. I'm still in San Jose, and, uh, but I just wanna let you know that's that's what I do. I, I have found great parking here by observing. I'm observing. So that's how you do it. So what has happened? Why am I in San Jose? I had one person say, and I love you, I think Claire, shout out to Claire, she has mentioned, why are you in San Jose? There's nothing in San Jose for you. Well, yeah, there is. <laughs> there is something here for me. I had my check engine light come on again. And I went to O'Reilly and they had one of those devices that could read out what was wrong. And there was a, there's a small air that is getting into my fuel system. In a lot of cases, that's what your check engine light will come on for. Last year when I was in Reno and I was with Red, um, somebody had, and, and what's weird is his came on the exact same time I did. It was like the exact day, how in the world did that happen? So it was the same thing with his, I don't know, did the weather uh, click that on or what happened? Yeah, okay, we'll turn it this way. 
I know, I'm sitting here. I could be out walking, I'm at a park, but the wind is so, it's blowing hard and I just gonna sit here and talk to you. Cause I think this is good information. Well, what he did is I bought the material to clean. He said it was the, the intake and it needed to be cleaned. There was a little thing that went down that let air, let air in. It needed to be cleaned out. Okay. So I bought the cleaner and he did the work. Thank you, Red. Shout out to Red. Well, I think this code was a little bit different. So I want to have the system checked out. I have an appointment on Tuesday. So, which brings, which is why I'm glad I'm in San Jose. If I was in another town along um, Highway 1, I'm not sure. It might be very, very expensive along there because they're smaller. But I'm glad I'm in San Jose and I'm glad I'm going to get this addressed. You know, I have a 2006. There's going to be things here and there that have to be addressed. So we're getting a couple things addressed right now. So, but, okay, so how did I find my mechanic? Well, I am a triple A member and I'm actually a platinum member. So I like the platinum because I have yearly, I have two toes that I can do that are 200 miles. I can have two of them, not just 50 miles or 20 miles, but 200 miles. So if I am on a coast, maybe it's highway one, I could ha um, have them bring me back to San Jose. But I'm staying in San Jose right now because I just don't want to be driving my minivan that much until it gets checked out. Because I love it. It's my home. You know, like that's what I named it. I named it home. Yeah. So that's how I found my mechanic. If you go on the AAA app, there's, if you scroll down, it has for, um, repair and maintenance of your vehicle. And so I click on that and it, I put in the zip code or the city where I'm at and it will bring up who they recommend and who's closest to that area code. Yeah. And it was the, the, the first one I called it was interesting. I told them, they said, well, come and drop it off. We can, yeah. And I said, well, I kind of told him, I said, I said, well, you know, I kind of live in my minivan. So I said, I, I, I don't mind waiting if I can, can I wait in the waiting room? And they said, oh, there's absolutely no waiting room here. You'd have to go find a library to sit at or something. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna go sit in a library. I want to be close to where my minivan is. And I want to keep a little bit of an eye on things. Uh, I don't want when I get back there after uh, being at the library, I don't want to find a whole bunch of stuff missing <laughs> out of my minivan. So went to the, I said, well, thank you very much. Goodbye. And the second one, I told them my situation. They said, oh yeah, well, we can do it Tuesday. And I said, well, here's my situation. And I told them and I said, so I don't want to, you know, um, be without my home for too long. If there was a part that had to be ordered, okay, that's fine. Uh, I will bring maybe bring it back. On you could call me and say, "Oh, it's the parts in," and then I will bring it to you. If it was something so serious, which I don't think it is, if it was so serious, yeah, I would probably. I think I've talked about this. Get a hotel, but anyways, that's how I wanted. My main focus for this right here is how did I find a mechanic? I didn't have to go on Google and say, oh, mechanic in San Jose area. I can go on my AAA app and I can find certified garages that AAA will uh, sanctify and uh, recommend. And so I'm gonna take it in. And, they, and I told them I'll do an appointment, but I just don't wanna be away from my home for that long. And yeah, so that's how I found this mechanic that is going to look at my uh, fuel system and see if there's a glitch. The light is off now. <laughs> yeah, it, it went off um, this morning when I started it. I'm still gonna go have it checked out just in case. Okay, now I wanna unbox this. I got myself my own device, my code reader. 
and we're going to read it. Although my, my code isn't there anymore. The check engine light isn't on, but I'll show you how to use this. Let's unbox this. Let's see what's in here. This was 90, this particular one was $99. It's called Gar, Car Scan. I bought it at O'Reilly. It's by Innova. Okay. But she, the manager came out and helped me with it. She did it. She showed me how to use it. I said, I don't know how to do this. I've never done it before. And she showed me. Now I haven't down, you have to download the manual. I haven't downloaded, but I'll take this off now. And it works by, I think, there's no USB to power it up to keep it charged. I'm pretty sure when I look at the thing, there's a battery in here. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. Okay, let's see if you can see me. There, it's, it's right here. You'll see it. It's just sticking out right here. It's the same shape as this and you just put it in. Okay. Okay, well, let me turn on my... Okay. Okay, green LED in, oh. Okay, so it says, indicates that all engine systems are running normally. All monitors <laughs> on the vehicle are active and performing their diagnostic testing. And no DTCs are. Present. There's other tests I can use to, that I can do on this. It says that uh, to check my alternator, you know I'd love to check that because of the alternator thing I got going on, but it says it needs to be at normal temperature and it's not, yeah, it's still, the car is pretty cold, so. Okay. But when you get under here, you'll see it. It'll just be sticking out there. And it looks like this, it's sticking out, it's about the shape of this. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do the plus and the minus. Okay, <laughs> I know. Um, let me see, what do we got here? Let me find something that I can hold on to. Okay, the scissors. <laughs> this, is my, this is my shifter. Okay, there we go. Let's see if we can do this. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna hold the scissors. Let's pretend like this is my shifter. You know, when you, you push on mine, you push, it's automatic. You pull it, you push in this little button and then you put it in reverse, reverse, neutral, drive. Now in the drive, you if you push it to the right, there's a plus and there's a minus. Now you just pull, push in that little button and bring it over. Okay, so I'm driving, driving. I know this is kind of a weird thing to hold. I'm gonna hold it like this, okay. So I'm in park, I'm driving. I got it in, it's in drive. Now I'm going down a hill and I can sense that I'm probably gonna to need to brake pretty soon because it's really going downhill. So instead of putting my foot on the brake, I push it over to the right and I go like that. I just pull it back one time, yeah. There's a little thing where you can push the shifter over to the right and pull back on the on the the minus. The the plus is above. Now I'm going down a hill, but it still seems like it's really starting to go faster and faster and faster. So I'm over here. All I do is pull it back again. Just pull pull it back again. Okay. It's not going to go so far. I mean, it'll stop. But it's just a little bit of a pfft. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going down. Now, if you're still, it's really in a steep decline and you really, you're like, well, I gotta put on my brakes. I, I keep going faster and faster. One more time, do it the third time. Just give it a, give it a yank, pull back. Not hard, but it'll go back. About for mine on the third time, it's like, you can really see in my, that one uh, 
indicator goes all the way up to four, four and a half. Now, I'm coming where it's starting to level out. What I do is I pulled it back three times, right? So it's starting to level out. This is what I was told. It might not be necessary, but this is what I was told to do. So I do it. Go up to the plus. Go up to the plus once. Starting to go. Go up to the plus again. The next time, I'm starting to level out now. Just bring it over to the left and go back into drive. Easy. Now I'm going down again. Bring it over to the right and go down one. Whoops. Go down one. Now it's leveling out. Go up one. Up. Okay. Then bring it over and put it back in drive. Easy. That's what you do. Now, so practice. Practice when you're in a parking lot to get used to it. Because it's scary when you first deal with it. You go, oh my gosh, I've never done this. I don't know how this works and I'm going downhill. Don't wait till you need to use it. Practice before you need to use it. So everybody go practice that. You gals that have never used that before, now you know. I never did either till I knew. Now I'm an expert at it. When I go down, I can feel it. I feel when, whoa, I need to go down one more time. And then I just, you know, and then go up a couple times if I've done it three times and then over back to drive. And I, I just do that. They say for your brakes, cause your brakes could smoke out. You need your brakes, right? In fact, when they're really steep hills for trucks, at the end, what they do is they have a runaway, like if your brakes totally stop working, it's the, uh, a runaway um, lane where you, if you stay over and it'll run away and it'll tell you which one, sometimes they're on the left, sometimes on the right, to stay on that and if your brakes go and what they do is it's a thing where they have like a lot of sand or dirt and then it kind of goes up so if they're if they don't have any brakes and it's a runaway vehicle it's a runaway vehicle you know it'll they if they go in that lane they'll stop and they'll just like you know it'll stop them yeah and then they can be dragged out towed out yeah but your brakes can go if you smoke them out they say use the plus and the minus and don't be afraid to practice it there you go Here's something interesting, and I did appreciate this question because a lot of people ask that. Now, I'm going to give my my opinion only. My opinion only. Because I know some people will disagree with me, and that's fine. That's what we're all about in this country, isn't it? That we can disagree with each other. They asked, Minnie Van Lee, please tell me the difference between homeless and a nomad. <laughs> Yeah, well, my my answer was, uh, uh, not much. <laughs> I know people hate that. Hey, I don't, you know, I am in my vehicle. I live in my vehicle. I just do. I'm in my vehicle often. Every day. <laughs> yes. And I travel around in it. And I have all the comforts of home here. I do. Well, but then I went on to say there are different degrees. I am a nomad is somebody who lives in their vehicle on purpose. That was their choice. And they took the time to prepare and purchase and acquire things that make our life easy here. You know, we've got our power sources. We've got refrigerators we've got toilets things like that yeah we took the time to prepare for it now a more of a homeless person living in their vehicle would be somebody who they were forced into it now there are nomads that prepared for it but they were forced into it their rent kept going up or they didn't want to spend all they just couldn't afford it anymore their social security isn't enough and they were kind of forced into it, but they prepared. So they're, they're a nomad. But a homeless person living in their vehicle, there's a whole bunch of those all over the country. I'm seeing them everywhere. A lot in Reno, but they're everywhere. They're everywhere doing that. So that's the difference. They were forced into it in some way, shape, or form. And a nomad is somebody who did it on purpose. I did it on purpose. Why did I do it on purpose? I had, <laughs> even as, for uh, five years ago, it was aw awesome rent. Yeah, it was less than $500. 
and it was a historical house in a really fabulous area. And I had lived there for 15 years. I mean, yeah, it was my home I, I, for 15 years, yeah. It was almost as if I owned it, but I didn't. I rented it and my landlords did not raise the rent on me. In fact, when I first rented it, um, they wanted to rent to me and they said, we don't put up the rent, but we don't overly fix things. Main things, yes but we're not gonna do a whole bunch of remodeling for you. So I said, okay. My son is a carpenter. He put a few um, doors in where there weren't any doors and cause he's a Finnish carpenter. So uh, yeah, we put a couple doors in if something needed to be fixed. I even in towards the last few years, I maintained my own, uh, the evaporative cooler. I don't know if you know evaporative cooling in Arizona, you would know what that is. They never did put in central air conditioning. And most homes in Arizona have central air conditioning now, or both. That if it's monsoon season, the uh, evaporative coolers are not gonna work as well. So then you can use your air conditioning, but uh, it's very expensive to use an air conditioning. So I never did put air conditioning in until the very last year in my bedroom, I did put a window unit in. So we even, I even learned how to maintain my own evaporative cooling. And I would get up there, I got myself an extension ladder, scary, and I would climb up there. And we would every year, um, my daughter lived in the, beside me and we would get up there and we would do our evaporative coolers together. Yeah, we'd scrub things and change the pads, but that's a whole nother story, isn't it? Which brings me to why. Why did I do that? Why did, yeah, why Why would I leave that um, life and move into this life when I have such good rent and such good, um, a good area and you know I love Tucson. Well, here's the reason why. Hot rods, okay. Well, my daughter's, um, my son-in-law, her husband, got transferred to Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, in with He worked for a, a large corporation and he got transferred there. So I was very close to them. They lived next to me and my granddaughter, very young granddaughter. So I did go to be with them eventually. But I had research, I'd been watching uh, Nomad channels for about two, three years previously. And I knew that's what I wanted to do eventually, so. Well, a couple months after I missed them so much and I was getting kind of bored without them there. So I thought, well, this is it. And my daughter was having a tough time there. Uh, I mean, she was brought up in Arizona, not Ohio. It's like a different country almost there different climate, different attitudes, different types of people, even different phrases and different words that, yeah, mm, different laws. So they bought a, a large house with me in mind to come and help with my granddaughter. So it was just a matter of time. I found my minivan and within one month I had given everything away to my child, I had my children in Tucson take what they wanted. I gave, uh, I had them, what I did, and I have this in the book, how to do it. I had cleaned out the total back room. It was like this big sunroom. There were windows everywhere. And I cleaned that completely out. And anything that I thought I would want for the nomad life, I put back there. So that anything in the rest of the house was up for grabs. And so I invited them, please come and take what you want. And then when they couldn't take any more, cause you know, I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. I said, well, bring your friends over, bring your friends' parents over, bring your parents' friends' friends <laughs> over. And they did, they took what, then what was left, I put, I threw away, or the really good stuff I put out by the curb. You know, we do that in America. I, th I know we did it in Arizona. I don't know so much, I didn't see it as much in Ohio, 
But what they do is you put stuff out by the curb if people want, and then after about a week, if they don't take it, then you put it in the dumpster. So that's what I did. I got rid of everything. I actually called Salvation Army too at the very end on stuff that nobody wanted. They were bigger things. And I called them and they came and if they wanted it, they would uh, load it up on their trucks and take it. Yeah. So that's my story. That's why I became a nomad. I then stayed in Tucson for two months, just getting acclimated. I wasn't ready to go. Um, I still had some clients left over that I wanted to service in my business. And we were just biding my time and it gave me time to get used to um, being in my minivan, but I was still in an area that I knew where things were. Why stress my brain out so bad that not only am I living in now in my minivan and I'm trying to get used to, you know, maneuvering inside here, where do things go? But I didn't also want to, like, where is Walmart? Where am I going? What, yeah, yeah. Uh, where do I park? What do I do? So I recommend that in, in my book too, to, if you're going to get started in the nomad life, just do it in your area. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, then after two months, I drove to Ohio. I did stay with my daughter for, um, it was a good, I think six, seven months. I stayed at their house. I had my own area of the house. I had my own facilities. I had a refrigerator and everything. It was a totally remodeled basement area. It looked like maybe an, it had a bar. It had a little refri little, little sink, you know? Yeah, it was cool. I had my own door going out and that was great. But I soon realized I needed to get back um, in my minivan. That's really what I longed for. I didn't want to live in a house. I know that sounds silly, but I didn't. It didn't feel right anymore. So, and then I got a job at Amazon. I worked there in Kentucky. And after that, I took off back to Arizona when a uh, winter came again. Yeah. So, okay. So that is my story. And I've been moving around Arizona up the Nevada, Arizona corridor ever since. And Salt Lake City and now I'm in California and I'm expanding a little bit. Yeah. Okay, everyone. This was on more of an informative video. This is information. And hopefully my next video will be a little bit more what's going on in the area. But this is good information. I like to give good information to y'all. So I love you guys. Uh, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching it all the way through. And you might learn again a little bit about why I'm a nomad. And um, do I love being a nomad? You betcha. You betcha, baby. I love it. Um, I wouldn't trade it. Uh, people say, well, would you go? You know, no. I love this. I love living in this little my little clubhouse here. Yeah. Join my club. Yeah. Oh yeah. And join the group, Facebook group. Yeah. And don't forget, uh, minivanlee.com for stickers and, uh, magnets. Yeah. Love you guys. Keep talking good. Keep talking sweet. Keep sugar raw, baby. I got you good, I got you sweet, got you on hold, my baby.